Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, any honored guests, and my brothers. I have told my vocation story more times than I could count. It was common for me to use my story as a teaching tool for the high school program in Totus Tuus. So over the last few years, my understanding of what God has done in my life to bring me here has greatly increased. So why do I find it difficult for me to express the grace that God has done in my life? And so, like Augustine, let us start at the beginning. I'm only 20, so it won't be nearly as long as the confessions. <laughs> my parents are actually very devout. I say it that way because I didn't realize how much they loved Jesus until I came to the seminary. Uh, my dad was in his mid-30s when he had a reconversion, thanks to Scott Hahn, and has continued to grow in his love and knowledge of the church ever since. My mother played the organ for daily mass at my church for years until she had kids running around. Before I was born, God had prepared for me a dwelling place. While I was yet little, my family prayed a rosary and we read the Bible together every night. At the age of five, I had planned on either becoming a priest or a Lego maker. <laughs> it is at this point in the story that my Totus Tuus team leader said there wasn't much sex in either profession. <laughs> uh, sh she meant success, uh, but her point was made. When I grew up, after juggling many job opportunities, I decided I would become a priest. Um, it wasn't much of a surprise to my peers since I was the only third grader quoting scripture at the time. In fourth grade, however, uh, I fell into depression. Uh, my, my dreams of becoming a priest uh, started to darken as I began to believe the lies being whispered to me by Satan, that I was not loved and that I was unlovable by God, especially as a priest. I didn't think of the priesthood again after that. But God was with me, and he used that time for amazing growth. For four years, fourth through seventh grade, I would get to spend four hours alone with my parents as we drove to Sioux Falls to see the doctors once a month. Four hours alone with my parents. With my dad, we would listen to Scott Hahn, and I would be able to ask him biblical questions. And with my mother, I got to talk about life problems and the problems that I was facing. Those were really formative years in what I truly believed as a Catholic. Junior high and high school were tough, however. I didn't want a repeat of my depression, so I started living a life contrary to my moral upbringing. I, I fell into depression because of lack of friends, lack of love from the friends that I thought I had. Um, and so I told myself I would do anything for friends. So by eighth grade, I had established habits of impure speech, dirty thoughts, and etc. That lasted throughout high school. But at the same time, God was drawing me closer and closer to himself. Freshman year, I went to a Steubenville conference here at St. Thomas where I first really encountered Christ in the Eucharist. I never doubted, but that experience wasn't one of peace and joy, but of fear and trembling. I truly knew that the awesome presence of God was before me. But it was that night that the call to the priesthood entered back into my life. That is also when I started praying most every night, just a little bit at a time, but still more than I normally did. And then Easter of my sophomore year, I made a grave mistake. I asked God what he wanted me to do with the rest of my life. <laughs> the first words to pop into my head were, be a priest. Um, now, anything could have sparked those thoughts, for they definitely were my own head voice, um, but I couldn't shake them. So I ran. For an entire year, I ran from that call. I think there was some girl involved at the time, but I'm not sure. <laughs> my junior year is my rock bottom year, as I call it, and the year of my confirmation. And I knew I needed to get serious. 
I told my mom to send me on retreat. She sent me, and I returned a changed man. On the retreat, I felt the love of Jesus Christ for the first time. I felt so good that I just finally caved. In prayer, I asked God, what do you want me to do with the rest of my life? The words, be a priest, popped into my head, and simultaneously, I looked at the, upon the image of divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. If you want me to be a priest, then I'll be a priest. God is good, and he has given me everything I need to make that decision. My time at seminary has been a growing period of trusting in the Lord. Currently, I seek affirmation upon that decision, but I know in the end, God will love me. Praise be Jesus Christ.